Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil, we're here with Farmer Liv and we are heading off We're doing a couple of odd jobs to do today It's not a full day's work, it's literally just one of these days where there's a lot, a lot of little things to do yeah. Starting off by tagging a calf and picking up a tractor and roller from where we were rolling the last day We had to bring back the jeep and the uh, teleporter So we had to leave the tractor behind so there just wasn't enough, let's move it on But anyways, we'll get moving and we'll start, we'll tell you more about why we're tagging the calf in the next couple of seconds. Anyways, we'll be on. So, we are out here now with her heifers. Excuse the few yellow flowers out there, you know, biodiversity, you know, we can't, we can't win them all. Now, to explain, it's quite windy, so I'm just going to hold my hand over the mic so I can't point at myself. So, the reason why, we have two calves. One is 1056's calf, that's Liv's cow. She calved what, a week ago? And then the other calf belongs to 4036 who calved just before the weekend and we didn't get a chance between getting to the plowing and that to calve, to tag the calf. So we have our tags here to tag it. Don't get any close to live till I explain because this calf could get a little bit lively on us. So the reason why we have calves and we don't normally have anything bar what's come out of the dairy herd is we had a rig bullock and what a rig bullock is is a bullock that wasn't castrated properly so and we use the bloodless method of berzido berdizo berzido berduzo berdizo to castrate uh, our bulls to turn them into bullocks so it's a method where you put like a clamp up onto a testicle and then you close it and it snips the cords and one of the bull bullocks we must have missed one ball because we seen them in we generally speaking the heifer some bullocks are beside each other and oftentimes you'd have one jump out with the other and we don't pass any heat because they're castrated but we seen a bullock riding so we're like this doesn't look right that's not right so we scanned all our heifers in january now the two the calves so 1056 is a three-year-old cow and 4036 is over two she'd be heading for three year old this spring because she was one that wasn't heavy enough for finishing so she was left back but she got pulled and we had when we scanned all the heifers because we had to make sure what was in calf what wasn't just in case we weren't sure about this bull or rig that we had six in calf 1056 was one of them we had planned upon a wagon on her but just didn't happen so we'll be doing that this time round and we sold four of the six to the mart as in calf heifers with unknown origin. We kept 4036. I don't even know why we kept 4036. No, I don't. I, yeah, I don't, for whatever reason. So both have calf now. There's 1056. There's Ishbini, her calf from last year. And then that's her new calf. You have the name for him, have you? Spotted Dick. Oh, Spotted Dick, because he's a white, he's a white willy or a white speck on his willy. So there's all the generation of one family. And then that calf on the hill that's looking at us is the guy we have to tag. And 4036 is as like a, a speckledy kind of a Angus. So it's an Angus on an Angus, or Angus cross on an Angus cross. So it's 75% Angus. We'll be holding on to 1056's calf and we'll probably bring him to beef. But the calf on the hill and his mother will probably bring to the mart whenever they're finished here and they're coming home for the winter. He's calved anyways, and we gotta go get this calf. He's gone look sense. he's gone looking for it now. We're gonna have some fun. But um yeah, there's Spotted Dick and 1056 sucking away. And Ishbini there with the horns. Where is she? Oh there she is there, yeah. So we were able to get to her when she had calved. There was no issue with you can see her coming to her calf there. So um yeah hopefully we'll don't have any issues but we better get it done. We got him! Is he not in there? Birkenstocks for all occasions. It's the most important one to get in. For example, it goes into a bottle. This is mum. This one. That one there, so you just have to always be a bit wary mm. about how the cow's behaving. Calf? Calf's not giving out, the calf is bad, <laughs> then I could be in trouble. Come on, no messing. Crunch it, get out. Woohoo! There you go. Ear 
springs. Oh, put your mummy. A lovely little Angus cat. <coughs> Wait, you can see the mother has that like a bluey speck in her or a grey speck. Calf has it. But the lovely square calf, like it's this, for what it is, an Angus cross off an Angus cross, I don't think it's too bad. It's a nice, sizey, shapey calf for what it is. He goes. Where? Oh, there he is. He's a little runt, runty bit of a calf compared to the other calf. But, hey, yes. okay. as Father Phil says, when they're, alive, on him, though. when they're alive, that's all that matters. But 40, 36 and her calf in however long, months time or that, we'll be headed for the mart. We're not keeping them. Anyways, we be on to the next job. So we just picked up the tractor. We're just leaving where we were uh, milling grain rolling. We call it rolling grain, but usually when I say to people we're rolling, they think I'm actually like flat rolling or Cambridge rolling in ground that's been planted. But no, when I say rolling, we're milling, we're crushing, crushing grain. So the tractor and mill has been away near all the last week, really. Um, done a lot of rolling, got three, four, she's now, was it three or four? Big jobs out of the way, or fairly well fairly well under the way so um, yeah we'll go home now we're going to have to roll a bit uh, of organic stuff that was dropped into it where we combine for a lad uh, with that to roll and we want to roll a lock for ourselves to start feeding the bulls we have in to um, make sure that we can keep the calves fed and the pigs fed and all that we'll be on and um, yeah we'll get a bit done for ourselves we're back in the meal shed it's empty Father Phil, I just met him, he's gone in the 60 to 70 and the small hardy sprayer. He's spun out the last of the spray. Uh, gold crop was down and they had a look at our crops. Maize is doing fantastic. Um, we might, if we have a chance, we'll have a look at it. They're reckoning end of September should be ready to harvest. Uh, they took some leaf samples off the beet and the beet is a bit slow, low on boron. So Father Phil's gone out with some boron. He's gone out with the last of our BE 16 Evergreen, I think it is, the stuff we got off Nova Q that we've been using to replace our artificial fertilizer on our cropland. And he's also putting that on our griller rape that was last, we, we, we found it savage last year and we actually bought an IBC of this fer, uh, liquid fertilizer and super job. But well, he's gone to put that out. And you'll see Nova Q at the plowing. We, but, um, we found the BE, I think BE 16 Evergreen, their spray on fertilizer. Superb job. And we just, he's gone out the last, I think, of the cube. So the cube was that, and IBC has asked us all, all year. So we want to tip, take off the mill, and then tip this load here. This is what we got combined for an organic farmer. Um, so it's oats, barley, peas, and um, there's quite a lot of thistle in it. Um, but that's just kind of how it is. It's starting to get hot now, so it just needs to get done. It's quite high in moisture. That's because of the thistles. It's, it's an organic thing. We'll explain more when I get tipped out of the trailer. So we we'll just dropped the mill pond that trailer. Lee is away. Uh, Fred and Flurry, we're down to the last three jobs of the year. So really, really on top of it this year, having Rory and then having Lee, it's making that the workload just that much easier because we're literally we're three weeks two weeks two weeks from the end of the season and we're down to three jobs so anyways i'm gonna go drop that put on that tip that and um, then we're going to roll that we have to pass it on it and then and with that roll back into the trailer then we're going to just back in the mill and load some of our own barley just to roll so we have it for feeding pigs and calves because we're just out so yeah again. So, we have it tipped out now. But you, the problem was with this organic crop we cut, um, now there's not a lot, a lot of thistles growing up through it. And the thistle, when it's trashed, was coming in with the crop. And that's put the moisture into the sample. And there's nothing you can do. It's just the way that when a thistle runs through, it just trashes and it breaks down and it ends up in with the barley. So, we're going to roll and we're going to bug a bit of acid on it. I'm going to just level it out in the floor there with the telly to cool off before we go rolling it because it'll be a bit heen sticky going through the roller we'll be putting a lot of prop propionic acid on it to be able to get the keep you can see the peas in it but um yeah it's organic stuff when done right is good but when it goes wrong 
it goes wrong. Anyone who's in organic farming, I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. It's a lot harsh, especially when you go into the tillage end of it. There's a ban is hard. It's hard. But saying that, one of the jobs we done rolling was for an organic farmer, with two organic farmers, and they had a savage sample of grain and peas and barley and it was oats and sorry yeah oats and beans and i'm not just sure the way it was organic stuff and it was mixed with your protein your pea and your bean in it savage stuff so much so it has father phil convinced a trying either to grow peas or grow an arable crop next year to see how that goes so someone have to check up on grow a crop i'm pretty sure they probably have peas combinable peas there but yeah, it's something we're going to be doing for next year after doing that job for them and seeing how lovely the feed was after it was rolled. It, it, this year, Father was like dead set against it, but after seeing the job that they had done and that was the organic stuff, he was very pleased with it. And he's now, we're going to try it. Not organic, but we're going to try it conventional and have it then for feeding the calves. Come once we run out of the meal we buy in, then start feeding our own stuff, barley and peas to calves. That extra protein should do a nice job on them. But um, yeah, anyways, we'll go, I have to scrape out the bit that's left in the trailer and then I'm just going to level this out on the floor while I get the mill set up just to let it cool down a bit before we start rolling this. It's, it's high in moisture because of them bits of thistles. It, the crop was ripe, but just them thistles in it made, made a divil out of it. But what can you do? What can you do? So we're just going through the mill there now, put the acid on it. So it's just looking like it's um, just too sticky to go through roll. So we're just putting a true fund acid on it and that should just keep it and um, should get it to dry out. It, it's kind of dry itself out a little bit and then roll it again. But yeah, it's just, this has made an absolute divlog. That's just the joys of organics. If it goes wrong, it goes very wrong and it goes very wrong very easily. So yeah, we just keep moving this. So I got this about 10 minutes put this through it because there's only about three tons. So it's not gonna take very long. So we'll just keep that happening. So the last bit's going through it there now. And when that's done then just spout over, turn around the spout so it chucks it out this side, and uh, then we're gonna roll a couple of tons for ourselves, keep all the animals fed. So yeah, you can see our rubbish pile at the front of the tractor. Uh, that's where we've been gathering all the rubbish throughout the year and all the tidying up we've been doing and that's just waiting waiting to go to, to waste recycling um whenever whenever we basically do it before we go to cut the maze that's from that that's just where we're putting it at the minute because it's concrete all around it. it's nice and safe and tidy it'll be wet it's gone away but somewhere to put it before we get rid of it all finish up so we are rolling away here we're going to be rolling you know four or five ton half an hour's rolling keep us going for a while so we're rolling our spring barley which come in at 13 and a half 15 percent and it doesn't need any acid or any treatment as it's dry enough so it's just rolling So, 
That's us finished rolling a bit for now. So this is what we have. So it's our spring barley and our beans. You can see the beans in it. All flaked out nicely. Yeah, makes for some good feeding. So we're just getting ourselves organized now. Give me a hand back and back. Yeah, now well he has it. So we're just putting everything back away again and then me and Liv are going to get a wire up around calves as Lee is going putting emptying our tanks out on silage ground where we've calves so we're just going to curtail them one half of the big field and then get the other half spread so yeah that's where we're at at the minute we're just out here in the pumpkins we're just wanting to size up how many pumpkins we have just to well, after the plowing we can be making a go at it at getting tickets up so we're counting how many we have in a five meter squared so that we can get a rough estimate so we can get the first round of tickets up so as you can see plants are dying off plenty of big big pumpkins seems to be a good few well not maybe a good few but a few rotten ones but that's probably just down to the weather it being such a wet and miserable july and august there's a big a lot of big pumpkins so but it's looking good there's a lot of big pumpkins so we've done our rough calculations here we're going to have to go inside and just crunch the numbers to make sure we're right the plan is this is your pre-warning now for everyone on youtube our tickets for the pumpkin patch for 2023 this field here you will be picking them where they grew you know a farm to four or farm to field whatever you want to call it like we have great sized pumpkins here super big guys nice not lots of little guys and we have all sorts of pumpkins out there we grew 52 different varieties but the tickets will be going on sale from sunday sunday at at six o'clock so this is your pre-warning we'll be putting a post up for everybody else but you're getting you're getting the pre-warning to the pre-warning so you have been warned or have been notified or whatever you want to call it six o'clock sunday evening the tickets for the pumpkin patch will be going for sale so a ticket is a pre box lock for half an hour for one of the days that the pumpkin patch will be open i'll be there for the last two weeks we're looking at running three weeks this year i'll be here every weekend but and i'll be here the last week of the pumpkin patch but i won't be here the middle yeah, the first week of the pumpkin patch just because we'll be trying to tidy up a lock of so on and that so i just can't afford to be at the pumpkin patch but i'll be there at the weekends you and the last week <laughs> but um so that is it and your booking is for one slot so for one careful so if it's a family unit you book it you get your free tea coffee and squash as part of paying for the ticket and you pay for your pumpkins based on the what you pick we have a pumpkin sizer so you size the pumpkins when you have them picked and then we charge accordingly we'll have farm shop merchandise all that crack as well pigs with chickens gooses and ganders and all that to be figured out we have a lot of figuring out to do but tickets will be going up on sunday six o'clock don't forget i know we better get on and get something else done so anyways happy days hope to see you all out here picking pumpkins so lee is spreading away there with the dribble bar tanker and the 10.2 meter dribble bar smell it so we're going to shut the calves down this end of the field um, and then he can spread all this top way. The west part of the field is down there along the canal. You get to move anyways and get wire up. Fine. So we just have our fence up. So Lee's going to spread that side or as much of it as he can and go dribble it just so it leaves clean grass for the calves. Bear in and be grand and they'll have this smaller square clean they haven't really made much of an impact on the silage ground yet but a bit of an update on the calves since you would have last seen them since we dosed them and um, the dust worked exceptionally well we had no issues we had no calves got i think we might have three or four calves we had to give some anti-inflammatories because they come under a little bit of pressure but we didn't lose any after dosing them and they're looking pretty good now they're they're they are you have jack and, and poke and some of the big holsteins there looking real well overall very happy so just a bit of an update on what happened so our dung samples that come back we had one dung sampled at 270 worm count one at 320 the ones that we sent autopsy we didn't dung sample and we had one batch come back on 60 which was very surprising 60 is basically you're not bad 
Two seven. As bad as the dung or the egg counts from last year, they were I think 405. But um, for the batch to come back at 60 were the ones on the multi species sward run at about five days out before we dung sampled them. And that's the only thing that was different between them and the other batches. So it left us a little bit confused as to why they were low and others weren't. Dose has, done, has worked wonders. So we have our next sample round of samples taken and everybody is nice and clean. All egg counts are low, but he wants us to go in, the vet wants to go in with just another injectable in a week's time just to make sure that we just carry them through uh, in case there's any immature fluke or not fluke, uh, lung worms in them that they're not, li li adult ones that are dropping the eggs just so just to just in case after having such a bad run and the cattle the bulls in the shed also come back with a zero egg count and worms long worm stomach worm and fluke so they're perfectly clean so the plan is six weeks time we'll let them out dose them with clasmectin so that we get a worm and a lice dose on them but other than that they're spot on but the calves calves have done well since you know they're looking not too bad you know i'm i'm happy it's it's it was a bit of a tough day that day just with how everything went out but they've, they've turned the corner again and you know they're not looking too bad so they're not not looking too bad at all so that's just a bit of an update on the calves since they went bad on us the last day but they're not too bad now are they live they're not doing too bad at all but you can see jack the whole the hundred percent whole steam and it's too fast <laughs> and there's two friends beside him just standing over. I think two of them are Belgian Blues. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get out now again. Enjoy it. So, my last job before we head off to the plowing or to our accommodation for the plowing is to get the low loader off the 3690. Let's go back it out on our new base out here, which I don't think I showed you yet. Yeah, we're waiting on stone. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I have lights coming on and the dash shouldn't be coming on. So I get this off and then I want to leave the tractor in the shed for Robert to start working at while I'm at the plowing because the tractor's not going to be doing much else and we have all the bits there. We've got all Gorfies to fully rebuild the front axle and uh, Robert has the job of doing it. So that's why I got left in the shed from that he can be working away at it in the dry so we get the low loader off and it gets in the shed and i figure out what's going on and that's the 3690 in the shed so just give robert a bit of comfort if it's wet he can be rubbed now so i'm hoping he'll get to it this week uh while i'm away and there's not much else going on just because it's, it's a big job you will you see what we're doing 3075 it's literally rinse and repeat half axe just a lot of work dropping it and lifting it and getting it all refurbished but it's basically rebuilding the front axle so to leave my tractor very safe. So just looking forward to getting that done and getting a four wheel drive working again. But um, so yeah, today's video, I know it's a lot of loose ends and a lot, but every, every week, every, you might get one or two days like this in a week, or sometimes when you're really busy, you don't see it for a couple of weeks. But it's one of these days where this morning we were running errands, we were doing admin work, paperwork, and all that whole crack. Then we got going, tidying up lots of little loose ends, and now we're heading off to the ploughing. So it's just one of these days, it's, you're at a lot, a lot of nothing. But um, as, as Liv would say, faffing. We're faffing a bit today, but it's just tidying up a lot of loose ends, and Lee's keeping on top of the slurry work. And while we're away at the ploughing, what's really left to be done is there's the final bit of slurry, just two or three jobs. They'll either be doing that if it's wet, if it's dry. We've two receding jobs kind of hanging in the balance there the way the weather's gone, just weather went bad, bad quickly on them. Um, so they're waiting and we have 20 acres of oats to cut. And there's dung to be put out and winter crops to be done, but that's more kind of once we get the slurry done. It's concentrating that too, because that's on the time frame. Two weeks left to get that done. But that's what they'll be at while we're at the plowing. Father Phil's at the plowing Tuesday. We are watching this on Thursday, so all will be said and done. So I'll probably be absolutely knackered when you're watching this. But yeah, that's what, that's what today is. Hope you enjoyed it. Topping up and fluting and rooting and all the rest. So I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Don't forget, pumpkins, Sunday, 6 o'clock. You get, you've got told first, so you have the pre-warning or the pre-warning or whatever you want to call it. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. That's it for me. Good luck.